symbolism of rivers and streams, the chalice, the cup and the Holy Grail. Water is symbolically spirit. It can be spirit output, which symbolically rises and is shown as clouds. See our video on clouds. Mist and rising dew. Spray. Steam. even fountains and other jets of water. Or spirit input, which symbolically falls onto us from above and may be shown as rain, tears, divine ones, snow. But if it falls, what happens to it then? To find out, we need to turn to our diagram of the mind. The Chalice We have used this hourglass shaped diagram in all our videos to represent the mind. It is divided into three. In the bottom bowl are the conscious and subconscious mind. In the top bowl we have the higher spirit with its composer of dreams, visions and hallucinations. The higher spirit is also called the immortal soul or the Atman or the Buddha nature. And where are all those arrows from beyond the mind at the very top of the diagram going? Straight into the top bowl. And what does this remind you of? A cup? Or a goblet maybe? Perhaps the font in a church? Or even a beautiful jewel encrusted chalice? Maybe even the jewel encrusted chalice every night of old searched and longed for the Holy Grail. But so few ever realise. It is part of themselves, and that with a crown of flowers and a pure and open heart, it is theirs for the taking. John Boyle O'Reilly From Songs, Legends and Ballads What man would be wise, let him drink of the river that bears on its bosom the record of time. A message to him every wave can deliver to teach him to creep till he knows how to climb. Who heeds not experience, trust him not, tell him. The scope of one mind can but trifles achieve. The weakest who draws from the mind will excel him. The wealth of mankind is the wisdom they leave. The mighty waterfall. Back to the diagram of the mind and you will see that the spirit input, this river of wisdom, intuition, inspiration, healing and prophetic insight now has to reach the bottom bowl. 
and symbolically this is seen as a mighty waterfall, if we are a mystic. See the video of horse. Rolf Voldo Emerson, Oversoul When I watch the flowing river, which out of regions I see not, pours for a season it streams into me. I see that I am a surprised spectator of this ethereal water, that I desire and look up and put myself in the attitude of reception, but from some alien energy the visions come. Rivers and Streams Having rushed like a vast waterfall into our mortal minds, the bottom bowl, we can see if we follow the blue wavy line down to its destination in the subconscious that it is captured by our sixth sense and perceived as long as our loud conscious self with its ego does not overwhelm it. This is not the end of this input, as it may now start dividing into all sorts of rivers that can both help heal us, the meridians, providing a sort of fuel for our bodies, our nervous system and our other bodily systems. It is traditional Chinese medicine, TCM, that calls these invisible lines of delicious cooling input meridians and they are like a river in a parched and barren landscape for those who are ill because they bring healing to a body that may be on fire. Although the TCM diagram only shows the main meridians for clarity's sake. The body is actually a great landscape of rivers. Some vast and wide. Some imperceptibly small tributaries and branches all of which are mirroring the bloodstream and nervous system of the body up to a point. As traditional healers are often able to discern pools of energy, spirit input in areas other than just the glands or organs of the body. Nadis The traditional Indian system of medicine, Ayurvedic, also uses similar principles. Vibrational medicine, Richard Gerber. The nadis are formed by fine threads of subtle energetic matter. They are an extensive network of fluid-like energies that parallel the body nerves in their abundance. In the Eastern yogic literature, the chakras have been metaphorically visualized as flowers whose petals capture the energy. The nadis are symbolic of the fine roots of the flower-like chakras that distribute the life force and energy of each chakra into the physical body. Various sauruses have described up to 72 thousand nadis or etheric channels of energy in the subtle anatomy of humans. These unique channels are interwoven with the physical nervous system. Because of this intricate interconnection with the nervous system, the nadis affect the nature and quality of nerve transmission within the extensive network of the brain, spinal cord and peripheral nerves. Dysfunction at the level of the chakras and nadis can, therefore, 
be associated with pathological changes to the nervous system. A good healer is able to discern where there are energy blockages or energy stagnation, obstructions to the flow. And in balance so that the flow around the body via Ida and Pingala is causing illness. In one of the greatest ironies of modern medicine, the staff of Hermes, the Cadasus, is used as their insignia, and it is based on the Ayurvedic system with Ida, Pingala and Sushumna. Chandogya Upanishad A hundred and one are the nadis of the heart. One of them leads up to the crown of the head. Going upward through that, one becomes immortal. And this clear out of mind and body to produce a balanced, free-flowing river is called the Kundalini experience. Rumi Rubaiyat Are you searching for your soul? Then come out of your prison. Leave the stream and join the river that flows into the ocean. Absorbed in this world, you've made it your burden. Rise above the world. There is another vision.